What's going on my fellow Elegant Savages? This is Termar Lawson, The Elegant Savage, and in today's video we're going to discuss how you can perform the sit and reach test at home and why flexibility is so important when it comes to calisthenic training. Let's go ahead and jump right in. Now today's video is going to be extremely short, but it's going to be jam-packed with value. But first, let me start off by giving a subscriber shout out to Great Voice Lessons. Today's video is actually inspired by a comment they left on last week's video, and they asked me, how can you actually perform a sit and reach test at home? So, if anybody has any questions in regards to health and wellness, regardless if it has anything to do with calisthenics, I'm here to provide value to you all, and I want to make sure that my content is geared to what you all want. So make sure you comment down below, hit me up in the DMs, whether it's Instagram or YouTube, and let me know what you all want to see. Now, let's go ahead and get into the sit and reach test. All right, you all, so I brought it down to the floor because obviously you need to be doing this sitting down. Now there's different modifications that you can actually do to the sit and reach based on your fitness level, based on if you're elderly, and different things like that. But today we're just gonna go over the basic sit and reach test. So the first thing you wanna do is if you don't have any steps, I don't have any steps inside my house, is you wanna find a box or anything like that. Now I actually have a Nike shoe box, so that can work. And if you don't have a shoe box, I'll also be showing you all how you can perform this without a box at all. So the first thing you want to do is get some measuring tape or a ruler. <coughs> Excuse me. And the next thing you want to do, what I did on this box, and you probably can't see it, I marked it off with a pencil, different points that will give me reference on how far I'm stretching. And so with a basic sit and reach test, zero to two inches is about average. So when I say zero to two inches, your toes are zero inches. So reaching your toes like this qualifies as zero. Going two inches past that is about the average sit and reach test. The next thing after that would be 2.5 to six inches. That means you're doing pretty good. 6.5 to 10.5 is excellent. And anything greater than 10.5, you're excellent. You're probably a gymnastics athlete. So what you want to do first is go ahead and make sure that your knees and your legs are flat against the ground, actually press against the ground. Now, the easiest way to perform this test is if you do have a partner, especially if your legs do not stay solid against the ground because your partner can help press your legs in. Next thing you wanna do is basically a forward fold. So you wanna breathe in, do chest, exhale, and stretch as far as you can and take note of that. So it'll look like this. And again, that's why I said if you had a partner, they'll be able to show you where you're at. Now what I did is I took my nail and I made a little divot in the box. So what I was able to do is about average again, I know y'all can't see that, but what I was able to do right now, just casually stretching, is about uh, a little bit better than average. So I actually made it to the six inch mark, so they would consider that good. Now, there's a couple things that you should know with the center reach test. Now I'm doing this straight up cold, like I just turned on the camera and started recording this video. The best stretching, especially for me and just in general, is when you're actually warmed up. So static stretching, the best time to do that is after the workout. So if you're trying to do a center reach test at home and you're doing it cold, your results would differ versus if you do a dynamic warm up like I'm showing you all here. If you do a dynamic warm up or if you actually perform this test after you work out, especially after a leg day, your results will change probably drastically. Another thing that you have to consider, and this is where the sit and reach test has flaws, is if you have short legs or longer arms. Now, when it comes to that, this can drastically alter your results, so you actually have to modify it in regards to your arms, and you have to figure out if your arms or legs are shorter or longer than average. Now, the last thing we're gonna do won't be any cuts in this video and show you all how to do it. Let's say if you didn't have a box. So what you want to do is take some tape. And I'm just going to show you all this. I don't have any tape out. What you would want to do is take some tape, take the ruler and tape where you have zero inches at. Then you would go up, tape two inches, go up, tape six inches, go up, tape 10.5 inches. And then you would do the same thing, pressing your legs against the ground or having a partner help you press against the ground. Or a pull, and you're there. Now, of course, we can't leave without relating all this information back to calisthenics and why it's important. Now, the reason why you want to be flexible with calisthenics, especially if you want to learn calisthenics skills, is 
because it will allow you to increase your range of motion and get deeper into the movements. So whether that's a handspan, back lever, planche, whatever the case may be, if your flexibility is on point, you'll be able to get deeper into that movement and be able to actually get into the perfect form. I'll give you all a perfect example. I was working on my straddle press in the gym and I saw a girl doing all of these full handstand tricks, walking on her hands, and I asked her for some tips. The first thing she asked me when she saw me practicing my straddle to handstand press is, how is my middle and like front split? And I just thought in my head like, man, I don't really practice my splits. And she's like, you'll never be able to do that with ease and be able to get that full range of motion unless you increase your flexibility. So from that time forward, I started looking at flexibility a lot differently. And that's how you all have to think about it as well if you want to be able to do these cool calisthenic moves, especially when it comes to straddle presses. Because what you have to understand with calisthenics is it's not just power, it's also balance, control, flexibility, and mobility. All right, my fellow elegant savages, that's it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed today's content. If you did, make sure you leave it a big thumbs up, smash that like button. It really helps the channel grow. And subscribe, because every Sunday at 9 p.m., I'll be showing you all how to create organic strength with nothing but your body weight and be able to get in the best shape of your life. If that sounds good and interesting to you, make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you all next Sunday at 9 p.m. Catch y'all next time.